This video was brought to you by Imprint. Oil is probably the most important commodity in the world. Oil and the demand for it explain much of today's geopolitical landscape, and high oil prices have a habit of inducing recessions, especially in oil importing places like Europe. That's why the recent rise in the price of oil, which is now trading for over $90 per barrel, has provoked some anxiety in the EU about the prospect of an oil-induced recession, or even another energy crisis. So in this video, we're going to take a look at why oil prices are rising, what this means for Europe, and whether we should really be worried. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. So let's start by taking a look at oil prices. Having reached a peak of about $120 per barrel in the immediate aftermath of Putin's invasion of Ukraine, by the beginning of 2023, oil prices had stabilized at about $75 per barrel. Now, this is where they stayed for about the next six months, but in the last few weeks, they have started rising steadily once again. Today, oil is trading at about $90 per barrel, up from about $70 in July. And many analysts now think that this could reach over $100 in the coming weeks. So why have oil prices started rising once again? Well, there are broadly two reasons. The first is that the demand for oil has just proved to be remarkably robust recently. You might think that with the global economy slowing down and various economic crises in China, which is the world's biggest oil consumer, demand for oil will be relatively weak. But while it might be slightly below trend, oil demand has still ticked up recently and is now similar to its pre-pandemic level. This is in part because, despite its economic woes, China's oil demand has been relatively strong, possibly because China's economic woes are mostly to do with weak consumer demand, but its industry is still going strong. But beyond demand, the main reason that oil prices are rising is a lack of supply. Essentially, in the last few weeks, the world's two largest oil exporters, Russia and Saudi Arabia, have both decided to cut off their oil production. Saudi Arabia actually decided to cut production in April. Well, they announced that they'd be cutting their output by about 500,000 barrels a day to about 10 million barrels, before announcing that they'd be cutting another 1 million barrels a day by July. Now, these moves were supposed to be coordinated with Russia and the rest of OPEC+, an expanded group of oil-producing countries which essentially act as a global cartel to control the price of oil. But the Saudis were the ones making the deepest cuts here. And there's actually good evidence that Russia was actually cheating the Saudis by producing more oil than it was supposed to. Regardless, after their monthly meeting in April, both countries agreed to cut production. But it didn't seem like Russia actually followed through, and the Kremlin suddenly stopped disclosing oil export data. This was kind of the worst of both worlds for Saudi Arabia. It was selling less barrels of oil, but prices remained relatively low, because Russia was still flooding the market with more oil, which just means less revenue for the Saudis. Conversely, it's the best of both worlds for Russia. It gets to sell more barrels, and prices are higher than they would have been, because Saudi Arabia isn't exporting as much, which means less supply, and so higher prices. However, in the past couple of months, Russia has begun to toe the line. In July, Moscow announced that it will be cutting 300,000 barrels a day on top of the Saudis' 1 million cut. And a few weeks ago, both countries announced that they'd be extending these cuts until 2024. Unsurprisingly, this has pushed oil prices to new highs, and the fact that both Russia and Saudi Arabia are continuing with these cuts suggests that they could go higher still. Now, these high oil prices have provoked some real anxiety in Europe for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the fact that Russia is reducing production suggests that Putin is gearing up for a long war. When Russia was cheating the Saudis and producing more oil than its quota, this was interpreted as evidence that Russia desperately needed oil revenues to fund its war in Ukraine. However, the fact that Putin is deliberately reducing production, sacrificing short-term revenue for the promise of structurally higher oil prices in the medium to long term, suggests that he's getting ready for a long war, which will require a more consistent stream of revenue. Secondly, the European economy just isn't in the greatest of shape right now, and high oil prices are only going to make matters worse. 
The Eurozone grew by 0.3% in the second quarter of this year, according to Eurostat data. But that number was inflated by Ireland, which grew by 2.8%, the highest rate in the Eurozone. And unfortunately for Europe, Ireland's growth was mostly driven by American companies using Ireland to minimize their tax payments, which now regularly accounts for nearly 2% of the Eurozone's entire GDP. Anyway, the point is that the European economy isn't doing great at the moment, and high oil prices are only going to make things worse. That's because high or rising oil prices almost always hurt Western economies. Because they're oil importers and so much economic activity relies on oil or other energy sources. Rising oil prices in the 70s, for instance, caused by the Arab-Israeli war and then the Iranian revolution, put significant economic pressure on the US and Europe. And a spike in oil prices after the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait triggered a brief contraction in the UK. It's probably no coincidence either that oil prices actually hit a peak just before the 2008 financial crisis. And this is also why oil prices are so unstable. They run in cycles. High oil prices cause recessions, which bring down demand and therefore oil prices, allowing the economy to recover, which then pushes up prices again, and the cycle repeats forever. But the third thing that Europeans are worried about, beyond prices and the war in Ukraine, is about the prospect of another energy crisis. Europe actually fared pretty well last winter, despite high prices and a reduction in Russian hydrocarbon imports. But they were helped by a series of enormous support packages. And for most of 2022, Europe was still importing Russian gas via Nord Stream and Ukraine's gas transit network. With Nord Stream destroyed and gas exports via Ukraine petering out, 2023 will be Europe's first winter without any Russian gas at all. Now, Europe knows this, and that's why they've been stepping up LNG imports for a while now, currently holding a record amount of gas. However, rising oil prices could make this more difficult too, because oil prices usually have some kind of correlation with gas prices, and high oil prices will force Europeans to use more gas instead. And to make matters worse, uranium prices are also at a decade high, which will put yet more strain on Europe's energy system by making nuclear generation even more expensive. All in all, while we're still a long way off from a full crisis, things don't look good for Europe on the energy side of things. And this is something that European policymakers should be keeping a very close eye on. Now, this is obviously a hard thing for policymakers to manage, but they do have to reach an agreement here. So they might be interested in checking out the course Never Split the Difference on Imprint, based on the incredibly popular book. Just like TLDR, Imprint is all about helping you learn quickly, conveniently, and visually. It's super quick because most of their lessons take less than two minutes to complete, summarizing knowledge from all kinds of topics and using Harvard professors and best-selling authors to teach you key concepts. It's convenient because it's all housed in their easy-to-use mobile app, letting you replace doom scrolling with actual learning. And it's visual because well, look at it. Their animated explanations help you stay focused, understand concepts quickly, and actually retain what you learn. So join the millions of users learning with Imprint, including me. I'm taking their multi-day flow course right now. And do that by using the link in the description. Plus, if you use that link, you'll get a seven-day free trial and get 20% off an annual plan when you sign up. And they'll know that you came from us. So check out Imprint, support our new sponsor, and thanks for watching TLDR.